Hmm. Hey everybody, it's the 3D Printing Professor, and in this video we are going to get wood! No, we're going to get our fill of wood! With wood fill filament. That was awful. I, I hope nobody watches this video. Hey everybody, welcome back. So I have a couple of samples of wood fill filament from ColorFab. I've got their standard wood fill. I've got their now discontinued bamboo fill. And I've got cork fill. And if you observe closely, you can probably tell which one I'm going to prefer because of how good it printed. So let's let's go over them. To start, I printed with my standard test filament test object. And with wood fill, there is a lot of stringiness and a lot of bad layers and it in fact jammed up uh, actually I ended up because this wasn't on a spool it got jammed and it got caught around the uh, the spool it didn't feed it got stuck and so it didn't finish but there's enough here that I can tell that it does high detail very well and the support removal is ugh, not very good but it works mostly it's okay then I tried the bamboo fill now ColorFab no longer sells the bamboo fill, and on their website they say they cite the reason for that as being that it's difficult to get a hold of bamboo, that, that it's expensive and all that, but after printing with it and after seeing the result of printing with it, I think I know the real reason why they discontinued it. This stuff is hard to print with, and it really, it prints the worst of them all, it fell apart, it was, it was flimsy, it stuck to the build plate. Bamboo fill, you know what? Don't mourn its loss, guys. It's not a really good filament. Then I printed with cork fill. The same file, the same, uh, well, essentially G-code, with the same temperature settings and everything, and it is a magnificent print. Look at that top layer. There's nothing supporting that top layer but a couple of top layers. Now, generally speaking, do increase the top layers and things like that, but this is a beautiful looking print. And the supports, well, the supports still don't, remove great and they in fact took the bottom with it when I tried just now so it's not perfect but cork fill I think is the best printing out of a lot of them now I just printed this as though it were PLA I did not change my settings appropriately for wood fill which I went back and looked at afterwards and you should do thicker layers and faster and longer retractions for wood fill, so I went and adjusted my settings after that. You can also see that there's some nasty stringing going on right there, so we'll see if we can get rid of that as we go forward. I went back, plugged the wood fill back in, and printed two Tiki Chest Ponds. Oh, I should probably talk about where this model comes from first. So the Tiki Chess uh, chess set was one of the chess sets in the Tinkercad uh, chess challenge uh, that I, I won, but that this one by Whistler, aka Timothy Johnson, uh, came in as first honorable mention, and honestly, of all of the competing chess sets, it's the one that I respected the most and thought was going to beat me. And so I printed this set a while ago uh, in just regular plastic, but now I want to have a set in wood fill, so we're going to reprint it. We'll come back to this in just a little while, but if you want to find it, it's on Tinkercad. Just search for Tiki Chess. So, I printed the pawn, and I printed two of them with, a, you know, just a little bit of space between them, and you can see I haven't quite got my retraction settings down. In fact, at even at the recommended retraction settings, there's still a lot of goobers going on here and so I, I have to think a little bit about this normally when you get this sort of of mess what you do is you pull out your you know handy dandy scraper scrape down it get rid of it but the result of that is that you get a bunch of little white marks on there and how do you get rid of those white marks well you do you solve that by grabbing your heat gun and blasting it with a little bit of heat. But what's that gonna do to wood fill? Well, let's find out. Doing a nice low setting and doing it very gently for a couple of seconds. This is warming up my fingers. I should have probably uh, grabbed my, my uh, needle nose pliers to do this with, but 
the result is it's actually fixing it. It's, it's not perfect, but it's not discoloring it. It's not making it darker. So after it prints, it's okay to do this. So that technique actually does work. Just try to save the retraction or the, the uh, travel moves for the back. In other words, if you print two of them, which is a good idea to print two of them at a time, print them back to back and then clean them up. Now, why was I concerned about heat? Well, if you vary the temperature settings as you go, then it's possible, theoretically, to change the color of the prints uh, as you go. And I want to show you a little bit how I do that uh, in Simplify 3D. So let's switch to my computer screen. So in Simplify 3D here, I've just pulled up my settings for PLA on my replicator uh, here. And what you can do is come over here to the temperature settings. Oh, wrong camera. And all you have to do is per layer temperature set point, choose a layer, let's say maybe five layers up, choose a temperature, let's crank it up to 230. Uh, let's make sure we're doing this on the left extruder and then add a set point. Now, pro tip, you're going to be doing this a lot. You're going to be making a lot of set points, taking the temperature up and down as you do this. And so to save yourself some time, it might be good just to increase the layer number to 105 and add another set point and 205 and add another set point. That way you get three set points. Now what we're going to be doing is every hundred layers, we're going to be repeating the pattern that we do, but nobody's going to notice, trust me. So now I do another layer change and let's, let's bump it up to layer 12. Now let's, let's, we're at 105. Let's take it to or 207, let's take it to 208 and drop the temperature back down to 190. Oh, we're on a right extruder, doggone it, Joe. Well, we'll pretend that we're doing this right and that we're doing it on the correct extruder. The first set point should be about 100. Well, here's what I did. I set the set point at 190 and then I raised it up and brought it back down. Uh, 100 add set point. Uh, and then zero add set point. Oops. Let's go back into it. Uh, so layer eight, my set point is 190 add set point. So now we go five layers up and then we set the heat to 230, which makes it nice and hot and should darken it up. And then we go eight to the eighth layer and we reduce it down to 190. Now we take it up to the 12th layer and we'll go up to 200 maybe this time and add a set point and do this again for 112 and 212 so that we don't have to repeat our efforts. And then we'll go up to, maybe we'll go up to 115 and we'll take the temperature this time up a little bit to 110. So add set point, 100 add set point and zero at set point and we keep doing this we go up and down with the temperature sometimes stepping it up and then dropping it down sometimes dr taking it up fast and stepping it down we're going for something that looks like wood as we're doing it and then we hit okay we print and we see what happens now we're not doing any sort of purge tower in this we're not trying to make sure that the table uh, temperature stabilizes which you can do right here say hey get up to that temperature before you do that which it, it's possible to do, and there's there's a video on YouTube by CNC something. Oh man, I should look that up. I'll, I'll have a link to it in the description, uh, where he actually does the stabilization because he goes between the two extremes, and he does a very good job of it. But I'm not going for that. If there's a little bit of blend, I'm actually okay with that in this case. It'll look more like wood. So I went on and I did it this way, and I printed it. And the result uh, looks like this. So here is, I'm showing you the good side, the result of, of me changing temperatures. And the result is not actually that dramatic. It's there, you can see it. But what's weird is that it seems like the print changes tolerances as it goes up. The higher temperatures are slightly shrunken in more than the lower temperatures. At about 200, it seems to stabilize, and then from 200 to 230, it stays small. So what we end up with is every time I drop below 200 to 190, it, it kind of ended up ridgy and bumpy and lighter, but bumpy and ridgy. 
I really didn't like this. And I had a similar effect when I did it with the cork fill. Although it, in cork fill, it's even harder to tell the difference. Honestly, while this is possible and while it's capable of, of changing colors as you go up to create a, a kind of wood appearance, I'm not impressed enough with the results to do that. Now, I want to talk for a little bit about how this feels. This doesn't feel like wood. Even printed at 40% infill, which should make it feel kind of substantial, it still doesn't feel like wood. It feels like plastic, although a little bit rough plastic. Maybe paper mache at best would be how to describe this, but uh, I wasn't super impressed with the layer changing. And it's, it's wood looking, and it kind of doesn't feel like plastic, but it doesn't quite feel like wood either. I don't know. Uh, judge for yourself. But then I went on to print the rest of the chest set, and uh, I printed the pieces one at a time, and I noticed, well, I knew this was going to happen, and I could see it on my test print, but where it got to the top and where the heat didn't remove itself from the print and stayed in one place, it really melted the print and did just ruined it. You really need to print this with either a sacrificial tower, which I talk about in the video that you can see here, or a, just print two of them at a time and let the, the nozzle get away from the part, which means that you're going to have some stringies to clean up, but go ahead and do that. It's, it's worth it to do that because just make sure that you face them away from each other and keep open air on the face side of them so that you're just cleaning them off the back. Now, I noticed something about these prints after I had finished them. Uh, let's close this down and go back to the Tiki chess set. Do you notice any difference between between this bishop or, or medicine man and the one that you see on the screen here? Do you notice any difference with this knight and the one that you see on the screen here? When Timothy made this set, there, there were big problems with it. Originally, the bellies disappeared and they were they were hollow from the legs to the head and it was just a weird thing that happened and when I opened them up and edited them and looked at them I realized oh my goodness the bellies are there you just need to ungroup them to the point where you know, with Tinkercad you you take objects and you group them together to embed holes in them and that's what he did but he got so th this model is so complex for Tinkercad that it errored out on a lot of those parts. Well, apparently it also arrowed, arrowed out. Here you can see in the his old submission of it here in the contest way back years ago, it doesn't have those geometries, but the the top feathers in the king, in the the bishop and in the knight suddenly appeared recently. I think what happened was Tinkercad updated. Timothy had put this geometry in there and then Tinkercad didn't put it in there. He never took it out. And when Tinkercad updated, it recalculated this model and did it properly and added in not only feathers on the top, but the knight, uh, this knight is just naked legs. He's wearing a loincloth here and the bishop is wearing a loincloth in the front as well. It's a different chess set. So that means that all of these are wrong and obsolete and I'm going to have to reprint them again but that's okay I like Corkville and I think that it has a lot of applications in a lot of places that to me are very good I've ordered a roll of Corkville and I'm going to be keeping it around in fact I have to have a roll of some sort of wood fill for the uh, Kickstarter that I am still in the process of fulfilling and will be done fulfilling soon. So I, I have some people who ordered wood boards. I need to be able to print them and I'm going to print them in cork fill because I really like the way cork fill prints. Wood fill prints okay, but don't mourn the loss of bamboo fill. Well guys, that is that is Color Fab's wood fill lineup and I really enjoy them. Like I said, I'm going to keep some of them around. Check them out if you want. Feel free to do that. I want to thank everybody uh, uh, for watching. I want to thank my Patreon backers and, in fact, a new Patreon backer, Michael Schaefer. Michael Schaefer, your uh, uh, 
uh, tile is up there now and it's printed in the wood fill filament. It's a little bit hard to read because I hadn't gotten my retraction settings and I did things a little bit wrong on it, but it's wood fill. So it's a unique one up there. They're all unique. They've, they've all got something cool about them. So I hope that you uh, enjoy that and, and thank you very much for your support. And if you want to get in on it, hey, there's still room and we've got new backers all the time. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. As always, safety first. I'll see you next time. Do you want to know more about 3D printing but don't know where to start? Or did you buy a 3D printer but you need some help getting it going? Don't panic. The Beginner's Guide to the 3D Printing Galaxy is here, now, for you. Buy it on Amazon.